Imagine a magnetic field filling the space. Think of it as an invisible vector field surrounding everything. And inside this field, imagine there's a massive particle that carries a spin of one. Now here's the surprising part. This simple-looking quantum system, a spin one particle in a magnetic field, is mathematically dual to a machine learning classifier that can classify three objects. Yes, you heard that right. A quantum particle and a machine learning classifier share the same mathematics. In machine learning, this model is known as multinomial logistic regression. More surprisingly, if the particle had spin one and a half, the classifier could detect four classes. If it had spin two, the classifier could detect five classes. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the spin number of a particle and the number of classes its dual machine learning model can classify. But where exactly does this relationship come from? That's the question we'll answer today. Stay tuned. Let's start from the beginning. What do we actually mean when we say a particle has a spin equal to one? Even though the word spin sounds like the particle is physically rotating, it's not. Instead, spin is an intrinsic form of angular momentum, something built into the particle itself, just like its mass or charge. So when we say spin equal to one, we're talking about how much intrinsic angular momentum that particle carries according to the laws of quantum mechanics. Now, spin is not just a single number, it's a vector quantity. That means if you imagine a coordinate system with x, y, and z axes, the spin can have projections along each of those directions. We call those projections s sub x, s sub y, and s sub z. But here's the quantum wonder. In quantum mechanics, each component of spin isn't a number, it's a matrix. For a spin one particle, the matrix representing the z component of spin is a three-dimensional matrix. Now let's introduce our particle into a magnetic field. When a particle with spin is placed in a magnetic field, the spin interacts with that field, just like a tiny magnet aligning or misaligning with it. This interaction energy is called the Zeeman Hamiltonian, and it's simply the dot product between the spin vector and the magnetic field vector. Here, gamma is a constant that depends on the particle, and B vector is the magnetic field. Let's make it simple. Suppose the magnetic field points only along the z-axis. In that case, only the z component of spin contributes to the energy. This equation gives us a matrix representation for the energy of the system. If we set our units such that the product gamma h bar b equals 1, the Hamiltonian simplifies beautifully to... Now, according to quantum mechanics, when we measure the energy of this system, we can only obtain one of the values that appear on the diagonal of this matrix. Negative 1, 0, or positive 1. These are called the eigenenergies of the system. And this discreteness is what gives quantum mechanics its name. Quantum means the energies come in distinct levels, not a continuous range. Notice something interesting. There are three distinct energy levels here. That means the spin-1 system has three possible states. This number three will soon become crucial. It's the same as the number of classes our dual machine learning model can classify. In fact, for any particle with spin s, the total number of possible energy states is given by a simple formula. So a spin-2 particle has five energy states, spin-1.5 has four states, and spin-1 has three states. And now you can already see where we're heading. For every machine learning classifier with a certain number of classes, there exists a dual spin system whose number of quantum states matches the number of classes. Mathematically speaking, the number of classes in the dual machine learning is equal to twice the spin of the particle plus one. For now, we'll keep working with the spin one example. Now, in quantum statistical mechanics, the probability that a system is found in one of its energy states is not random, it follows a specific rule. The probability of observing a state with energy E sub n is proportional to the exponential of minus the energy multiplied by a constant beta, which represents the inverse of temperature. Here, Z is a normalization constant called the partition function, which ensures all probabilities add up to 1. This formula defines the famous Boltzmann distribution, the cornerstone of statistical physics. It tells us that lower energy states are more probable 
but the higher the temperature, the more evenly distributed those probabilities become. So far, everything we've discussed belongs entirely to physics. But now, let's make the leap to machine learning. Imagine now you're working on a machine learning problem. You're given an image, and your model must decide whether it's a cat, a dog, or a bird. So your classifier needs to distinguish between three classes. In multinomial logistic regression, our goal is to assign a probability to each of those classes. For example, maybe the model predicts 5% chance it's a dog, 5% chance it's a cat, and 90% chance it's a bird. We'd pick the class with the highest probability bird as the final prediction. But here's the revelation. This is exactly what the spin-1 system does in physics. It also produces three probabilities, one for each energy level. So if we think of these two systems as two translations of one same text, then each element in one language has a counterpart in the other. Let's build this translation dictionary step by step. In this translation, we say the energy levels correspond to the classes, and the energy values themselves correspond to the weighted scores of each class computed from the dataset. Mathematically, we make this substitution. Where W sub n is the weight vector associated with class n, and x is the data point or feature vector. In our example, it is the pixel values of the image. So, for each class, we compute the inner product of W and x, plug it into the exponential, and normalize over all classes. After this translation, the quantum probability formula becomes the familiar softmax function of machine learning where the partition function z now plays the role of the softmax denominator. And just like that, the physics of a spin-1 particle gives us the mathematics of a multinomial classifier. The class with the largest value of e to the power of the inner product of w and x becomes the most probable prediction. Just as in the Boltzmann distribution, the state with the lowest energy is the most likely one. If you were wondering how the model learns those weight vectors, W sub n, that's what training is for. By feeding it many examples, images labeled as cats, dogs, or birds, the model adjusts those weights so that the predicted probabilities match the true labels as closely as possible. We have covered this subject in episodes 3 and 4 of this series. So the key takeaway is this. The softmax function in machine learning and the Boltzmann distribution in physics are mathematically identical. They describe the same structure of probabilities, only expressed in different languages. Now, let's step back and look at the big picture. This duality between physics and machine learning isn't one-to-one. -one. It's much broader. Any physical system that has three energy states, not just a spin-one particle, can serve as a dual to a three-class machine learning classifier. It could be an atom with three possible excitation levels, a molecule with three vibrational modes, or even a more abstract quantum system with three distinct eigenvalues. In all cases, the probability of being in each state follows the same Boltzmann-like distribution, and that distribution can be mapped directly to a softmax classifier in machine learning. That's the beauty of physics. It tells us that the probabilities depend not on the messy details of the system, but on its energy levels. And that's the same principle machine learning uses when it translates those energies into class scores. If you found this intriguing, stay tuned, because in the next episodes we'll explore other dualities between physics and machine learning, and how we can use them to uncover new ways of understanding both physics and machine learning.